And up next, um, we have Mama Wendy with Artists for World Peace. Wow. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for the beautiful introduction before. I could not get on at that time. So, um, so I, it's great to follow Ken. Um, so my name is Wendy Black Nasta and my headquarters is right here in Middletown, Connecticut. Um, so I'll just give you a super quick um, update on how I started Artists for World Peace. And uh, the year was 2000. Um, as a jewelry designer, and as a matter of fact, the concept for this, I don't even know if you know, Emery, but it started at the Buttonwood Tree. Um, one of my students was belly dancing for the first time at your weekly belly dance event. So um, I had a jewelry class every Wednesday. So I canceled the class in solidarity. We all went to the Buttonwood Tree to see Celeste dance for the first time. It was a gift to herself on her 50th birthday. Wow. And it was sitting there in the button, which we seeing these belts that these belly dancers were wearing. So I thought I wanted to make one of these belts. And literally the next day I got a phone call from Bill Daly of the Hartford Current. He's a report. He was the reporter there at the time. And he called. He said, I'm calling four visual artists living in Connecticut uh, to ask, what are you doing with all of the European currency that's being taken out of circulation to be replaced by the euro? So I thought what I'll do is I'll take all the currency and, and combine it with gemstones from around the world and make an international belt for peace. At the time, my thinking was for dancers to wear and then pass along to different countries and invite dancers to put their energy into this as a way of celebrating world peace and unity of all of us. And also a way to show how beautiful each of us are and how different we all are. So to me, it was a celebration of peace, diversity, unity. So that's how the concept started. And it took two years to, um, I didn't wanna buy any of the coins. And I'm, I was stationed for years in the Diamond District in New York where I'm very blessed to have international clients. So I asked them, can you please give me a coin from your country? And I told them this vision that I had and it took two, two years just to uh, have people donate the coins. We started with 150 countries being represented. And two years later, after a lot of my students and I had two interns uh, make the International Peace Belt with me, it left to be blessed in India uh, by a guru named Amachi. And I just wanted it to be blessed and prayed over so that uh, the vision would be coming to fruition in a really beautiful way, calling on all the artists of the world to perform and, and meditate on world peace. So when it got to India, which was September of 03, little did I know it led a peace procession of 150,000 people. And the caretaker who was filming it for us contacted me and said, you have to get up a website because everybody is asking how can they bring this peace belt to their country. So I quickly put up a website called this concept Artists for World Peace. And that launched this entire now international organization where we've been to 35 countries and the, the story just keeps going and it's amazing. So what happened is after all these artists came in India, uh, the caretaker of the peace belt said, we have to leave something behind. So we decided to sponsor an orphan in India. My husband and I had already been sponsoring Tibetan refugees at a Buddhist monastery. So we, we took in another child and called him our first child of peace. Since then, as the international peace belt has traveled around the world, we take in orphans in different countries. And now fast forward almost 20 years, we have a family of children around the world made up of all races, all religions, all nationalities, all genders. It's the most unbelievable story because 20 years later, of course, some of our kids are in their thirties. And my youngest was given to me at five days old in Africa and Tanzania. And now she's 14 years old. So this story just keeps going. And um, what happened was we wanted to go and visit our children and really let them know that they're being loved and supported by a family in America. 
So it was when we got to countries such as Tanzania uh, that I realized we could do so much as artists from America. We could create these amazing events, raise money, and then travel and start these humanitarian projects. So that led to us opening an orphanage in Africa. We built a school in Ecuador. We built a battered women's shelter in Cambodia. And our work just keeps going and going. And um, being that we are in Middletown, Connecticut, no matter where we travel, we try to do something home. So 10% of the money that we raise goes to the amazing Grace Food Bank right here in, in Middletown. And um, we do these uh, projects. It's just fascinating to me because the money's raised by the arts, but now we're made up of almost as many doctors as artists because when we started building these health centers in different areas, we needed doctors to come and provide healthcare. So our mission, um, we're, Africa, thank God, is self-sustaining. Uh, we built the health center. Uh, my, our doctors from America trained Tanzanian eye doctors. They took over the, the running of the health center. Um, in Africa, we're still very much involved with our children, but all of our uh, projects that we created are now self-sustaining, which was the goal is to get to a country, create, create a project, train locals on how to take on this project so that we could then move on to the next country. So that's our approach is not to, not to just stay in one place, but to empower the people in that country to take over what we built. So in 2017, we came back to America and replicated everything we did in Africa here. And we started with Native American communities. So for instance, um, the, the free eye clinic that's so successful in Africa, we've replicated on the Rosebud Reservation through a project we're calling Native Eyes. So every June we're going there, we had to cancel, of course, due to COVID, but we did have a travel team of 52 ophthalmologists, optometrists, opticians, where there's so much energy now with Artists World Peace that when we go, we could take care of 1,500 patients at each clinic. So our impact is, is pretty profound, especially considering it started by going to watch belly dancing at the Buttonwood Tree. <laughs> So to me, it's just, it's so much fun. It's like, you just, you know, you get this vision and you just go and don't worry if you can make it or not. And so the way I look at it is just every day, you know, we're approached by so many people. We're welcoming to all artists, any artist who wants to work with us, um, contact us through our website, artistsforworldpeace.org, or, you know, we're right in Middletown. We're right on um, in the Decoven House on Washington Street. So artists approach us, many times we collaborate. Our biggest event is annually, it's, a, it's an artist world piece on Broadway. That's really our biggest fundraiser of the year. Um, we had to cancel our 10th anniversary, February, which was heartbreaking because this was gonna be an amazing year, but it's 25 Broadway stars every year come together and perform for us. And, um, and of course we have rock bands and, storytellers and every artist that you can imagine. And my husband as a musician started a, an amazing concert series 10 years ago where every concert, it's called One Concert, One Child. It's a monthly concert. We run it as donations. So if you come to a concert, you make a donation. There's, we don't care how much you put in. Um, and those concerts help us raise our children around the world. So that's a little, little tight summary. Um, we're officially not going on 19 years old, but we actually started right before 2000. Um, and it's a journey that just is so exciting and beautiful. And um, my whole concept is what can we do as artists? How can we change the world? How can we collaborate? How can we spread joy and love? And that's our guiding light. So there it is. So it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, Maria and Indy work with us. Um, so I, I, I want to say thank you for inviting me to come and talk a little bit about what we do. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Susan Allison, also, because um, she, she started the Buttonwood Tree. And, and, and as a matter of fact, I opened for her at, at, a, at, at a concert 
for one child for one concert one child at mama wendy's house um so that you know thank you susan and all circular um, and thank you mama wendy and uh, thank you all for being here and for sharing you know your lives in in, in this art form and 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 being vessels of love in every way that we're able to be so thank you thank yes. you so much I, it goes I, to show the strength when we unite it's i mean we, there's nothing we can't do good yeah. So we're, we're going to move into the second stage now uh, where the nonprofits and experimental art forms and community groups get to share about themselves and the work that they're doing in our community. And uh, we've invited some of uh, the people that we know, and we're excited and grateful that they're here today. And CC has invited some friends. And if you all know uh, people who are running nonprofits, please uh, share their names with us and we can be in touch with them or you can invite them if you're again um, new to um, new to this platform here. So right now we're going to go to the nonprofit section and uh, first up I want to um, throw in um, just going to change up the order a little bit. Um, our friend uh, Wendy is here. In fact, Maria, would you like to introduce Wendy because uh, Maria works with Wendy or, or volunteers with Wendy and uh, she's been, they've been together for a long time. And I just want to say thank you to Mama Wendy for all you've done for my daughter and for all of our family because you are just an, an angel. And so Maria. So thank you Mama Wendy for being here and for all the work that you do and for the, um, for opening up the channels of energy to flow where it can connect people all around the world to help um, to help others to uplift spirits to just radiate joy and to spread love and peace um, throughout humanity and all existence so um, I love you and thank you for what you do and for who you are and for being here 